Morning year nine, your task this week is going to be to continue the piece that you were working on last lesson. So hopefully now you've sketched out your outline of your Tisha Moore inspired portrait that was inspired by the images that you've collected. Um, I said you could either choose lockdown and self-identity um, as a brief or you could have chosen a current um, topic that was in the news such as Black Lives Matter. So I combined um, a little bit of the two. I combined my own experience with going to the Black Lives Matter protest and I then um, carried out some work um, and a, a sketch that I showed you last lesson uh, to then move forward. So today I'm going to be further taking inspiration from my images that I've taken um, and I'm going to be putting them into beginning to create my own Tisha Moore inspired coloured portrait and I'm going to be showing you today some tips and tricks for painting your portrait. Now I'm going to give you two lessons in total to complete this painted portrait. So you'll have, I would recommend you spend an hour and a half to two hours today, this week, um, on the painting, and then you can finish it next week. You can also use more than one medium if you choose. You could combine collage, you can combine pencil and painting. And next week I'll be showing you um, some further tips on this, but today's lesson is just gonna show and focus on some tips and tricks for painting. Um, and getting the really tiny details into your painting as well. If you don't have paints at home, you could try using tea stain or you could just straight away use coloured pencils. But I want to give you the tools necessary to be able to use painting should you choose. I'm also going to put at the end of the PowerPoint some links to some really cheap watercolour palettes. Um, similar to the ones that we use in school and they are around only two to three pounds if you buy them off Amazon um, and they can come within a few days so if you want to you can purchase them um, you know it is useful particularly those of you that are choosing art next year if you're not choosing art and you don't want to buy them that is fine you can use something else that you have got um, in the house but it's always nice to have some paints even if you aren't continuing um, the focus studies so the next step of the video is I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for painting using watercolour. When you apply the watercolour, it is really important that you blend your colours first. You can use the lid of the palette here to mix your colours if you need to. Um, and it's important that you apply them in a thin layer first. So you might need to add some more water. If you apply them in a thin layer first, gently, holding the brush close to the end and sweeping with the brush, you'll find that you can build up the colours a lot easier and you can be a lot more free when applying them. See, I'm just working really, really quickly dragging my brush in one direction, following the line that I've drawn with my brush. And this way, if you make a mistake at first when you're doing the edges, it's easy to get rid of. It's always good to have some kitchen roll or um, some toilet roll handy so you can just dab away any areas. Also, sometimes to lean on, um, I'm left-handed and I often work from left to right, but smudge uh, the left side of my drawing. So it's really important that you're careful um, that you avoid that as you're working. You can rest your palm of your hand on there so it doesn't make a mess. So now I'm gonna build up my colors. I'm gonna start with an orangey color and I'm gonna just drag out the water that is already in front of me. Now I'd quite like to, to create like a bled out effect to represent the lives um, in the Black Lives Matter movement and the lives that have been lost. So I wanted to create this kind of quick, rough, watery effect that shows and almost represents blood-like um, in, in the piece. So I'm not being too neat with this. I'm gonna wash my brush. And I'm just going to drag out what's already there. I don't need to add any more paint. 
I'm just gonna drag out what's already there. Like so. I'm then going to do a darker layer, so it doesn't really matter that I've gone outside the lines here because I'm going to do a darker layer around the outside here. They were just my guidelines. So now I'm going to build up a darker red by adding a little bit of black to my red. And then I'm going to use that for my outline. Again, you need a good mix of paint and water so it doesn't just drip across your page but it does depend on the effect you want again I'm trying to create this almost battle like quick effect in my work so I don't want the edges to be particularly neat for this one I want it to be a bit rough and not perfect so it's okay in this instance but you could do yours with neat edges, it just takes a little bit longer when you're completing. So I've just built up some quick mark making, like so. I've kind of bled out the edges on my piece to create a kind of chaotic effect in, in the work that I'm producing. So this is something you could think about adding to yours. It's really important that for this task that you work from the images that you have been inspired by throughout this time and that you take elements from them but that you combine um, them together. It should be a dramatic piece, it should be shocking, it should be dramatic and you should be using the light and dark tones within the watercolours to create this. It's important that you consider the colour palette that you use. When you think and when you look at the work of Tisha Moore, if you look closely, she uses a lot of bright colours, but she considers the placement of these colours. So, for example, the green background and the blue face stand out from each other. They contrast against each other. The focal point of the face is the eyes because they've got really, really large in a white um, segments and it really helps to create the expression of the mood in the portrait. But this one here, you can see Tisha Moore's uses a white face, a very, very pale, almost grey looking face that kind of signifies an uncertainty, an uneasy feeling. And again, this could be the way that you, you create and you portray an image. For the face that I'm going to be painting, I'm going to use some pale, pale and subtle brown tones because I want it to look like the character in question. And I'm going to work from an image that I've got on my image board. So just this black and white image here, which you can have a look at after. So it's a black and white image just here of Rosa Parks on the bus. So again, I'm going to add some water and a bit of paint and I'm going to apply a base layer. Now, I've just done a really quick sketch. So mine really, really is going to be built up from the painted stage. 
I'm just going to apply a really, really soft, quick base layer, which is barely too much paint at all. You can see that I'm rubbing off the excess. You can always dab off the excess on your paper towel, or your toilet roll, and then work back and forth, back and forth in straight lines to make sure there's no bubbles in the drawing. And now I'm going to build it up again. I'm going to mix some of my browns together and build up a slightly darker layer. I'm just going to add a bit of ink and then I'm really going to work quickly to spread the ink. You don't want to make your page too wet. If you make your page really wet, it's going to rip easily. So I'm building up the face colours. I'm going to leave it to dry then and then I'll work into another area and then I'll go back. And it shouldn't take long to dry at all. Hopefully those tips have given you some thoughts and ideas to think about when starting your painting today. As you can see, um, I spent around 10-15 minutes just on this section. Um, it will take you a considerable amount of time. You need to work carefully. You need to consider the textures, techniques, um, the mark making, your blending of colours as well. Um, and I will attach a few more videos that you can watch if you want to using the internet. Um, to the PowerPoint of tips and tricks as well. But you should be now working on um, painting the drawing that you started last week or using coloured pencils, um, and you could combine some of these as well. Um, but that is the task today, to just have some more progress on this um, final piece, Tisha Moore inspired design that you've created. And then next lesson, we will complete these. Hopefully that's clear. Have a great rest of the week and a great weekend ahead, Year 9, and I will be in touch with you very soon. As always, any problems or questions, just contact me via Show My Homework. Bye.